Hey everybody, Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? Reporting to you from Southern Colorado, over 7,000 feet elevation, and thank goodness, check this out, the big one coming, earthquakes off the west coast could eventually trigger a global event. This is Fox News, read all about it, natural disasters. And have you ever heard of the Cascadia subduction zone? You probably have if you listen to Leak Project. Well, recently, a cluster of EQs from 2.8 to 5.6 on the Richter scale Six point, I'm sorry, nanny nanny, shapeshifters, six miles underwater around the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, this cluster of earthquakes hit close to a big fissure off the coast of California parks, sparking fears of the big one. Now, previous studies have warned the geological spot of weakness has the potential to deliver an earthquake much stronger than the infamous San Andreas Fault. The last time was in the year 1700 between an 8.7 and 9.2 earthquake rocked the planet. In particular, the Cascadia subduction zone. Halo! This area spans northern Vancouver Island to northern California. Geological experts suggest a large earthquake on the offshore fault could trigger a 9.0 and a tsunami and have brought up the sobering statistics if the Cascade were to have a large-scale quake, the resulting tsunami could kill more than 11,000 and injure more than 26,000. And I think that is a very low number because think of all the nuclear reactors and just how populated that area is. Now, Chris Goldfinger, how would you like to have that name, Goldfinger? Chris Goldfinger, the professor of geophysics at Oregon State University, said, The Cascade can make an EQ almost 30 times more energetic than the San Andreas to start with, and then it generates a tsunami at the same time, which the side-by-side -side motion of the San Andrean fault can't do. Now, another quote from Professor Goldfinger, We'll lose a lot of bridges. We'll lose a lot of highway routes. The coast will probably be closed by downed bridges or landslides or both. Now, Captain Obvious could also tell you that, but what about the energy systems? What about the grid? What about all of the um, server networks that are out there? Would they be affected? How much would the internet be affected? Now, we all love the internet. So, Fox News, read all about it. And here, check this out. If you've been keeping track of Hawaii, Seems like the media hasn't been touching on it as much. 300 and something quakes today. Check this out. 320 of 347 earthquakes in the map area. This is USGS. Now, check this out. There's a 5.3 with an eruption. We just look at it. Volcanic eruption for kilometers. Nanu, nanu, southwest of Volcano Hawaii. 5.3. There's a lot going on right now, folks. There is a lot going on. Now, how many people live in California? How many people live off the coast of California and Washington State? Some beautiful cities out there, a lot of infrastructure. I mean, geez, it's bad enough if you've got one bridge. Imagine just one bridge going down in Seattle or Gig Harbor, the Narrows Bridge. There's two Narrows Bridges now, but imagine one of those bridges or both of them being closed down. I mean, I remember when I was in San Antonio, driving on the, on the highways and the freeways and just all these different bridges and these setups. I'm just thinking to myself, what happens if an earthquake or heaven forbid something, you know, some type of terrorist attack or some type of, I don't know, war type scenario. I mean, if we get attacked by another country, the infrastructure out here, I think, is uh, just like the energy systems. It really needs to be secured. And imagine what happens with a massive tsunami, major earthquakes. The volcanoes are one thing. I mean, Hawaii is dealing with some serious stuff right now. Kilauea is definitely going through hell. But I think that this right now is interesting because this swarm of quakes is in that area. Now, they've happened before. It's obviously nothing to go pack your bags yet over. It's something to be aware of. It's definitely something to be aware of. I also think it's interesting that looking at these statistics, how many earthquakes Hawaii has had recently, 
Do you think the earth is expanding? Do you feel right now the entire planet is actually getting bigger and that explains these large fissures and volcanic activity that's going on? Is it connected to the grand solar minimum? Connected to where the planets are? I think it's all connected, I really do. And the stratospheric aerosol injection programs, these solar radiation management programs, really can be, I'm thinking of the best way to word this, they can be very frustrating, in my opinion. Because I'm, I'm looking at the mountains, and even on nice days, you can see this nano haze in the horizon. You can't even see the beauty of the mountains anymore. It's, it's very bizarre. It's like something out of a movie. And speaking of, we're probably in some type of movie right now, The Truman Show. I talked to my mom today. She goes, have you seen The Truman Show recently? I said, no, but I think we're probably living in The Truman Show. She goes, yeah, I do too. <laughs> I was like, yeah, good talk, mom. I love you. You're awesome. Have a great day. So she's, she's a really cool person. Now, she's in the Northwest. You know, I mean, I got, I got family in the Northwest, and they love it out there because of the climate. They don't like the, the extreme heat. And the, the world seems to be heating up, does it not? I mean, Colorado, where I'm at here, Southern Colorado, this area averages over 10 feet of snow a year. Last year, they hardly got any. It's hot. Thank goodness I'm a reptile. Hello. <laughs> so, also, you know, with all these serious, large-scale scenarios and catastrophes, there's also people that just go through their own personal situations on a regular basis as well and have to deal with some, some pretty serious problems. And, um, and this is kind of, this is, I don't want to get too emotional about this. So give me a moment here. It's, it's really unfortunate because somebody reached out to me, uh, a couple days ago by email and, uh, they said, Rex, I'm a, a retired veteran and this disa or disabled veteran. And my two year old son has recently been diagnosed with leukemia. And you know, I was talking to him and he was telling me about some of the medications that he's got his child on right now and the expenses associated with them and what, the, what some doctors are recommending and what other doctors are recommending. It's a nightmare. The guy comes back from the Middle East. Um, I, he, he's disabled because his vehicle and the, uh, the people that he was with at the time drove over, uh, what are those things called? Uh, the roadside bombs. And so not only is he having to deal with physical situations right now for his own self, but his own sanity coming back. And now he's got to deal with his two-year-old son being diagnosed with leukemia. And certainly, it, um, I talked to him about it. He sent me a list of the, the medications that he's, that he's given to his son. And uh, he, he just said, hey, Rex, can, can you, you know, help me out with a, leave a link on the GoFundMe. So he set up a GoFundMe page. I made a donation. Um, I, I'm going to leave the link in the video description box. And if you guys click the link, just take a look at it. And, and also, what I would like to do is the Wonder Woman painting. It's fan art. My, my friend Brady painted it for me. It's a, it's a beautiful painting of Wonder Woman. I would like to give this to the person that um, gives the, the largest donation at the GoFundMe site. I would just like to offer this as, you know, hey, here, here you go. Please take it. And I think Wonder Woman would like that as well. So I don't know, though, because I've never met her personally. But I'll tell you this. Um, th this is the, I'm going to get the, let me show it to you. So it's three feet by four feet. It's painted on a, on a canvas. And I love it. I love this piece. And I think that personally, this is, I can't verify this, but I think that Wonder Woman is based off of Inanna. And if you research Inanna, the Sumerian deity, the Sumerian goddess, very, um, very powerful, very powerful, very beautiful goddess, 
And I think that um, at least from Inanna's standpoint, Inanna would be very happy to help in any way possible. So click the link and thank you for watching the podcast. Thank you for supporting our sponsors. Thank you for becoming more aware of your surroundings. I, I was thinking about that and I was talking to somebody today about the vision of Leak Project. And, you know, let me share with you where I see Leak Project going here in the very near future. I get hundreds of emails a day and I, I get asked all sorts of questions. And some of these emails are so long, if I was to read through just one email a certain time, it might take me an hour. And I do my best to go through as much as I can and produce valuable content that I feel is important, whether you want to look at it as entertainment or just knowledge or all of the above or just you know, whatever, whatever you want to look at it as, that's great. But the vision of Leak Project, I feel, is offering information that you can't find in the mainstream or that's going to be extremely difficult to find. Um, let me give you another way to put this. So I, I even wrote notes on this. Where is that? Okay. Hidden knowledge that has been suppressed by the mainstream to make the world a better place. That is the vision of Leak Project. Yes, um, information and news that you're not going to find in the brain drain media. Yet, why bring that information to the table? It, that's great. Yeah, okay, information is wonderful. But what kind of information do you want to know about first? Something that could make the world a better place, that could help people around you? That's what I think is good. So that's the vision. Hidden knowledge shared with the world for people that want to know about it that has been suppressed by the mainstream, the money funders, the dungeon masters to make the world a better place. Now, how is Leak Project going to do that? Well, the unique vision and alternative information in a, I guess you could say eccentric fashion that's sometimes serious because I'm from serious but not too serious with a dash of attempted humor. Now, by bringing podcasts, YouTube videos, and I also have a really cool subscription service at leakproject.com. I've got hundreds of podcasts exclusive to leakproject.com. Excellent interviews with guests from around the world, including some of my own shows, available only at leakproject.com. They're downloadable, they're streamable, they're ad-free. So, articles, blogs, and of course, the, the tin foil the tinfoil custom caps that have literally EMF shielding liners. So let me share with you another really cool experience that I had today that reminds me of the Truman Show. It's like it all, it all comes together. Um, this, this actually happened yesterday, but it happened today also. So yesterday I have a, a great interview with Colin Bloom. This guy is one of the top brokers on the planet. I mean, this guy is genius. He's a financial genius. And he sent me a Trump silver coin. And I'll show it to you in just a second. He sent me a Trump silver coin, and I didn't have it yet. And I tell him, I'm like, well, you know what? I, I didn't realize this, but here in southern Colorado, it's a little bit different. you got to actually go get a mailbox. I don't have a mailbox out here. So he's like, oh, okay. So I get a text after the podcast a, a few hours later saying, Rex, um, this is... I'm not going to say who she is, but she works at the post office in, um, here in Southern Colorado. And she goes, you have a, a package here. Uh, it's, a, it's in the undeliverable section. What do you want me to do with it? <laughs> I said, hey, I'll pick it up tomorrow. So I, I go pick it up today. And it was, just, it was just such a cool experience because this area, it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of people to live out here. But what are the odds that you get a text from somebody that works at a post office that you get a parcel that's declared undeliverable, but that person knows you because you met them several months ago in a very interesting fashion where you go in to mail off some caps and that person recognizes you because of the tinfoil cap that you're wearing. So, oh, you're, you're Rex with Leak Project. I, I watched some of your podcast. I mean, it's just so cool, right? And, and when stuff like that happens, doesn't it make you feel 
like you're in the matrix, like the universe is sharing information with you. The universe is talking to you and expressing knowledge and love to you in a way that you can see, but it's not like me talking to you. Because people are like, well, man, if aliens exist, how come we don't see them all over the place? Well, there's a lot of answers I could give you for that in, in my theories. But think about you looking at a, like a, a piece of ba like a, a bacteria or a, a, you know, a single-celled organism. It's way down there. You can only see it with a, a, a microscope. And is it really going to recognize you? God, divine providence, the matrix, the universe, this reality that we're in, and these higher-level beings are so complex. Do they have to look like us? I mean, how ignorant is that to think that they have to look like a human being to be at our level? Or to be a, a conscious being, or a conscious being that can that can think beyond our wildest dreams in this physical meat suit that many of us are in. Maybe not you, maybe not me, but many others. It's amazing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wave. It's a ride. We get on the ride, and we choose when you know we okay. Well, we choose which ride we want to take while we're on the main ride. So so we get on the main ride, and there's all these options and all these other rides we can take while we're on the main ride. It's a theme park. We're in a theme park is what it is. It's a, it's a giant theme park. It's a galactic theme park. Which ride do we want to take today? You wake up in the morning, which ride are you going to take? I'm taking the week project ride. Hello! Be excellent to